Hello Linear Algebra, today let's find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix and I'll show you guys 3 ways to do it. This right here is an example and notice that this matrix has no zero entries. So we are doing this legitimately, right? Anyway, the first way is of course the cofactor expansion and it works for the 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5 or anything bigger. But hopefully we don't have to do any of that. <laughs> anyway, right here, what we are going to do is you can choose whichever row or whichever column Ideally speaking, you want to do it to the row or the column that has a lot of zeros, but we don't have any zeros right here, right? All right, I'm just going to focus on the second row just to do it on purpose, just to emphasize you can do it to whichever row that you want, whichever column that you would like. And you also have to pay attention to the sign, and let me put it down on the side right here for you guys. You start with plus right here, and then just alternate. And then you have the minus, plus, and then you have the minus, plus, minus, and then plus, minus, plus. So. Let's have this done right here just to get ready. Now, this is how it goes. First, we are going to put down negative 1 right here. And then we are going to multiply by the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. And to get a 2 by 2 matrix, you just delete this row and you also delete this column. And you have 2, 1, 1, 2. So you just put it down right here. So as you can see, we were working with a 3x3 three three matrix, and now this is a 2x2 two two matrix. So it's going to get smaller and smaller. And that's why the cofactor expansion works for any bigger size of the matrix as well. But if you are dealing with a 5x5 five five matrix, you know, that's actually pretty hard. Anyway, next we will have the plus 2 right here. And then multiply by the determinant of, well, get rid of this, get rid of that. So we have negative 4, 1, and then 5, 2. All right, lastly, minus 3 right here, and then times the determinant of, get rid of this and that, so negative 4, 2, and then 5, 1. All right, so that's what we have. And now, how do we calculate the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix? If you want to use the cofactor method, sure, but you don't have to. It's just this times this minus that times that. That's it. <laughs> okay, so for the first one right here, we will have negative 2 times 2 is 4, and then minus 1 times 1, so 4 minus 1 right here. And then plus 2 times, this times this is negative 8. And then minus 1 times 5 is 5. And then for the last one, we have minus 3 times this times this is negative 4. And then minus 2 times 5 is 10. Now just go ahead and just do all the little numbers. Everything all together, we will end up with positive 13. I didn't do this in my head. I did this beforehand, that's how I know the answer is positive 13, right? <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it. But now, I think many of you guys know there's the trick, there's the so-called shortcut, right, of a 3x3 three three matrix determinant. Let me show you guys that. So, this right here is the so-called shortcut. Is it really shortcut? I don't know, you can tell me that later. Anyway, what it goes, how it goes is that you just write down the matrix, right? And then, well, right here, we're actually going to copy down the first two columns again and then put it down on the side. So this is negative 4, 2, and then 1, 2, and then 5, 1, right? So just the first two columns from here and there. And this is how it goes. First, we are going to multiply this, this, and that, right? So, negative 4 times 2 times 2, we get negative 16. And then we are going to add it with 2 times 3 times 5, which is 30. And then we are going to add it with 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1, like this. And then we are going to subtract, and then we go the other way. So have a look. 2 times 1 times 1, which is 4. And then you combine with negative 4 times 3 times 1, which is negative 12. And then lastly, we have 1 times 2 times 5, which is 10. So it seems pretty magical, right? And you can see this right here is going to be positive 15. And this right here is going to be positive 2. 15 minus 2, indeed, we get positive 13. Is this just a nice coincidence? Well. I will show you guys the quick proof of this right here. It's very computational. And after you guys see the following, you guys will see that, oh, yeah, it's just a nice way to organize all these computations. 
But let me emphasize though, this only works for this 3x3 matrix. When you have a 4x4 matrix, you will have to just go through the cofactor expansion where you can do the third way, but that will be later on. So let me just show you guys the quick proof real quick. And to do the proof for this, I'm just going to consider the matrix A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, Y, because you will have to use letters when you do, do proofs. So yeah. Anyway, what we'll do is we're actually going to use the cofactor expansion to help us out. So first, I'm just going to do this across the first row. I'm not going to be too creative this time. We have positive A, so we have the A right here. And then multiply by the determinant of just this part, right? So we have E, F, and then H, I. And then next, minus B, and then times the determinant of did this, did that, so D, F, G, I. So D, F, and G, I. And then, lastly, we have the plus C, well, we're not doing integration, so don't, don't get too excited. Plus C, and then times the derivative, of, not the derivative, times the determinant of D, E, G, H. D, E, G, H. It seems that I'm the one who's getting excited, but anyway. And then, what do we do next? You just multiply the other. As I said, it's very computational if you just want to do it this way. Well, we have A, and then we do this times this minus this times that, right? So it's E, I, minus F, H and then minus B times D I not the D I method and then minus F G and here we have plus C again and then D H and then minus E G all right so that's what we have and this is pretty much the formula to find the, the, the determinant of a three by three matrix but nobody memorizes this right anyway though have a look I'm actually going to combine the terms that are positive, well, without the negative, let's put that down first and then subtract the rest. So have a look. This right here is the positive term, but I don't know what A, E, and I are, so technically I don't know if it's positive or not. But anyway, this right here, A, E, I, and then I'm going to add it with, this is going to give me plus, so it's B, F, G, and lastly, C, D, H, so plus C, D, H. As you can see, here is the first part. And then next, I'm just going to subtract. Well, let's see. This has the minus, so we have this and that. So it is A, F, H, and then the minus is also already. And then here will be plus. We have this, so B, D, I. And then lastly, we have C, E, G. All right, so that's what we have. Very, very cool, huh? Now, have a look. If we come back to this matrix, and then if we just put down the first two columns again on the side, namely A, D, G, and then B, E, H. Have a look. When we do A times E times I, isn't it right here? And the next, B, F, G. Aha. And then C, D, H, right here, right? So that's exactly what we did. And then we just go the other way. So B, D, I is right here, right? Even though the water, but the water doesn't matter. And then next we have A, F, H, A, F, H, right? And lastly, C, E, G. That's pretty much it. Right? So this right here is a very convenient way for us to find uh, the derivative of the 3x3 three three matrix real fast. All right, so that's pretty much it for the first two ways. And now the third way is the most exciting part. Namely, we are going to use properties of the determinant and then uh, we'll see how they are going to help us out. So let me raise the board right now and let me know how you guys are doing. All right. So I'm going to write down one of the very useful facts of to calculate a determinant. So here is the fact right here. Well, this matrix is hard to find a determinant. There's one kind of matrix very easy to find a determinant, namely a triangular matrix. 
So what's a triangular matrix? Well, it looks like this. And let me just put on a 3 by 3 example for you guys. Well, let's say on the diagonal, we have the entries A, B, and C. And let's say here we have numbers. Right? And then the rest, this right here, they are just zeros. And this is called the upper triangular matrix. And if you want to find the determinant of this, it's just going to be A times B times C. Well, how do we know? Yes, we will also have to use the cofactor expansion, but this time we are going to do it across the first column. And because we have a bunch of zeros right here, it's just going to be A times the determinant of this. And the determinant of this, because of the zero here, is just B times C. So namely A times B times C, just like that. Similarly, if we happen to have a lower triangular matrix, so a, B, C on the diagonal, and this time we have a bunch of numbers right here, right here, and right here, and then the rest are just zero. This right here will also give us A, B, C for the determinant. Very nice. So that's our goal. And perhaps let's turn this into an upper triangular matrix. Hmm. And we also have to be careful of the rule operations that we do. Maybe some of them will affect the determinant. Alright, so let me just you know, talk to you guys along the way. Firstly, I would like to have a 1 in the first entry right here. That's going to help us out because I want to get rid of this 2 to be 0, right? So I'm actually going to interchange the first two rows. And when we interchange rows, well, we will have to just multiply by the determinant by negative 1. So this right here is going to be negative 1 times the determinant of this matrix. You put down 1, 2, 3 first, and then negative 4, 2, 1, and the last row stays the same. So that's what we have. Now, let me get this to be 0, and likewise, we'll get this to be 0. And the best part of doing so is that, well, we'll just do some rule operations. Namely, we'll multiply this by positive 4, and then add it to the second row. And the determinant actually stays the same. So that's the best part. So let's go ahead and just do that. So this is going to be 4, 8, and 12. And then add it here. So here we will have negative 1 times the determinant of this matrix. We have 1, 2, 3 states the same. But this is going to be 0, this is going to be 10, and this is going to be 13. Now, let's also make this equal to 0. This time though, we will multiply the first row by negative 5. So we're looking at this as negative 5, negative 10, and negative 15. And then we're going to just combine. This and that together, we get 0. This and that together, we get negative 9. This and that together, we get negative 13. All right, very good. Now, this right here is 10. Well, we are not trying to get the REF, so you do not need to like divide it by 10 whatsoever. You can just leave it like that. But I do want to make this equal to 0, so I can get into the upper triangular form, right? So I'm actually going to multiply this row by positive 9 over 10, and then add it to this row. Have a look. This is going to give us positive 9 over 10, and 9 times 13 should be 117, and then over 10. All right, so here, this is still negative 1, and then we have the determinant of 1, 2, 3, and then this is 0, 10, 13, and lastly, this and that is going to be 0, and 117 over 10 minus 13, of course, get a common denominator, and this right here, you see, is going to be negative 13 over 10, and then you didn't see that work out a fraction on the board. Anyway, that's what we have. Now, here's the most exciting part. We can just use this now. So, ladies and gentlemen, the determinant of this is just going to be negative, and then we have 1 times 10 times negative 13 over 10, and you betcha this right here will give us positive 13. All right? How cool is this, right? Alright, so among these three ways, let me know which way that you guys like the most, and I will do more linear algebra videos for you guys. And at the moment, that's it.